So should I start, Petros? Yep, yep, but you, I think we can we can go, yeah. Uh, good evening, Professor Ma and also uh, Professor Petros Raponis. And good morning to our Japanese colleagues and students. And thank you everybody for joining ISNA seminar series. The ISNA seminar series was launched in 2010 upon the inception of ISNA. Since then, the seminar series has featured the best researcher in the world on carbon neutral energy issues. Uh, myself, Dip Bransha, and I'll be the host today. Today, we'll welcome Professor uh, Hong Bing Ma, we call it Bill Ma, uh, from the University of Missouri. And uh, Hong Bing Ma is the Chair, Curator, Distinguished Professor, and a Glenn A. Barton Professor in the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering. <coughs> And he's the director of the Multiphysics Energy Research Center in the College of Engineering at the University of Missouri. He received his PhD in 1995 from Texas AM University. Uh, since then, he joined University of Missouri in 1999. He has conducted active research in the field of phase sensitive transfer, heat pipes, ejector refrigeration, and thermal management. His research has been supported by NSF, ONR, NIH, Intel, Dell. Uh, Foxconn, DAPRA, Northrop Grumman, and many other federal agencies and private companies. His research work has resulted in more than 310 publications, including one book, eight book chapters, and over 170 referred journal papers, as well as 21 patentable technologies. His contribution made are not only in scientific fundamental research, but also in engineering applications. His research efforts led to the establishment of both companies in Thermoavant Technologies, where he is the co-founder and president, and Thermoavant International, where he is the co-founder and CEO to further develop and commercialize his research result. He is a fellow of American Society of Mechanical Engineers, ASME, and fellow of National Academy of Inventors. So now, uh, I would like to invite our director, Professor Patros Raponis, to begin our session. Patros, please. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Bidyud. Again, uh, to all of our colleagues, uh, both in Japan and in the United States, uh, I'd like uh, to send a uh, good morning and good evening and uh, a warm welcome uh, to our uh, this evening's uh, webinar, this morning's uh, webinar. And uh, I, I don't want to take uh, a lot of time from uh, Professor Ma here, right? But I would like to mention that uh, uh, the webinar series here is the venue, Eisner's venue, through which Eisner gets informed, gets uh, uh, increasing his its interactions uh, with uh, the general scientific community, academic community, industrial community to get informed on the recent uh, recent developments in all of these uh, sectors, and to invite distinguished uh, visitors like Professor Ma to provide uh, their uh, latest uh, understanding and description of uh, outlook and trends. And uh, just uh, to mention once again that uh, we are an institute, we are an energy institute, and uh, our mission is uh, to advance uh, fundamental research that will enable low cost and carbon neutral energy system for the future of Japan and of the world uh, at large. So without uh, further ado, I would like to call Professor Ma to, to take it away. Yeah, th uh, thanks a lot, Petros. That before beginning, I just want to remind one thing. Uh, please raise your hand when you want to make a question or comment. And when you are called, please uh, also unmute yourself. Okay, thank you. Professor Ma, please, the floor is yours. Thank you so much for your invitation and a nice introduction. I'm going to show. Can you see my screen? Perfect. Thank you. 
Yeah, my name is Hong Bin Ma. I'm professor and chair in the Department of Mechanical and Aerospace Engineering, University of Missouri. And also I'm a part-time president and co-founder for Summer One Technologies. Today, I would like to share with you about the heat transfer enhancement mechanism in oscillating heat pipes. First, let's see what, the, what is the oscillating heat pipe. For a typical oscillating heat pipe, you can see we have a capillary tubing with a very small diameter. In this way, we can form a chain of liquid plugs and a vapor bubble. And we have a evaporator section, condenser section, adiabatic section. When we add heat on the evaporator section, liquid become vapor, vapor volume has expansion. In the condenser section, vapor condense into liquid. We have vapor volume contraction. Expansion contraction produce oscillating motion. Due to the oscillating motion, heat is transferred from evaporator to condenser. From a thermodynamic dynamic point of view, oscillating heat pipe is a small engine. If you look at this one, here the evaporator, heat the source with high temperature, condenser, heat the source with lower temperature. During the heat transfer process, we have work output, but this work output is used to generate oscillating motion. That's the reason why oscillating heat pipe can provide very high effective thermal conductivity. From mechanical point of view, oscillating heat pipe is a typical mechanical vibration system. For oscillating heat pipe, you can see we have a phase change heat transfer plus both convection. We have a higher thermal efficiency a typical mechanical vibration system will have a thermally driven higher heat transfer coefficients. Therefore, oscillating heat pipe can have a very high effective thermal conductivity, very high heat transport capability, gravity independent, transfer heat in a long distance with a light weight. For example, here, the power can up to eight kilowatts. The effective thermal conductivity can reach almost 35,000. And also you can see this one, when the power goes up, temperature difference goes down. Look like this against thermal law. For heat transfer, for heat conduction, we know heat flux goes up, temperature difference goes up. But for oscillating heat pipe here, when the power goes up, temperature, almost the temperature difference between evaporator and condenser goes down or almost constant. The reason is when the power goes up, oscillating motion stronger. So sometimes uh, some professor researchers call this device oscillating heat pipe. Some call it pulsating heat pipe. A number of years ago, I call this pulsating heat pipe. Right now I call the name oscillating heat pipe. The reason is many researchers have done extensive research on the oscillating flow and heat transfer. From published the literature, you can see oscillating basically include that contain include reciprocating and pulsating. For reciprocating flow, basically average velocity equals zero. For the pulsating flow, basically oscillating and move forward or backward. 
for oscillating heat pipe, you can see we have an open loop. That means just like this one, we close here, close here, we have liquid plug oscillating. But this kind of oscillating, we cannot produce move forward or backward, basically average velocity equals zero. And also we have closed loop like this, total closed. For this one, we have oscillating, and also we have a circulation, basically is a power setting. That's the reason I think the better to call oscillating heat pipe. What's the difference between oscillating heat pipe and the conventional heat pipe? As we know, for typical conventional heat pipe, we have evaporator, condenser. At the heat here, it transfers through the shell, rich working fluid, liquid, liquid become vapor, vapor travel from evaporator to condenser, vapor condense into liquid, condense it, flow back by capillary force. Most of the heat is transported by latent heat. For oscillating heat pipe, as we said, heat transfer mainly by with the change of heat transfer and also force convection. That means here by latent heat and sensible heat. And here thermally driven is a typical mechanical vibration system. Most of the heat is transported by sensible heat. You can see that the, uh, the, uh, the heat pipe we made eight feet long that one of my PhD students. For the oscillating heat pipe, how to generate oscillating motion in oscillating heat pipe? That's a typical eight turn oscillating heat pipe. This side the evaporator, this side the condenser. This image is, is by the neutron technology. We can see liquid, we can see through metallic wall, can see the fluid flow. If you look at the oscillating motion, it's a typical mechanical vibration system. If a typical mechanical vibration system, we have to have spring constant and exciting force. Let's see for the oscillating heat pipe. That the uh, tubing, the inside we have a liquid plug, vapor, vapor bubble here. If we increase the pressure or the volume smaller, the density goes up. Pressure goes up based on constant mass flow rate. Then we derive this one, we can find out the force we are equal to area times pressure difference. Rearrange this equation, compare this one with Hooke's law, you will find that the spring content equals to this. That means for oscillating heat pipe, we do have the spring content. And this spring content depends on the heat transfer process. For example, if the wall is constant temperature and the heat transfer from outside to vapor or from vapor to outside, based on isothermal process, we can find out this spring content equal to this one. If the heat transfer, you know, the compression expansion so fast, that case maybe it's adiabatic process. Use this equation, we can find out spring content equal to this one. So we do find out spring content for oscillating heat pipe. So next we need to find out what is the exciting force for the oscillating motion. Let's see example here. We have one tube, one turn OHP. This side the evaporator, or this side the condenser, this side the evaporator. The liquid, a liquid plug flow into 
evaporative section. And here, this side has higher temperature for saturated condition, higher temperature corresponding to high pressure. So here the pressure wave will travel from vapor phase to this interface. At the same time, pressure wave travels through liquid phase to this interface. Due to the pressure, because of the pressure wave speed in the liquid phase, different from the vapor phase, therefore, at this interface, will produce pressure difference. This pressure difference will be used to overcome the capillary force here and also the gravity. Use ideal gas law and this equation, this equation, we can relate to this equation to the power added to this oscillating heat pipe. So, <coughs> From here, you can see we do have exciting force. That means oscillating heat pipe is a typical mechanical vibrating system. So from this equation, next, we need to find out from this equation, if the, uh, at what condition oscillating, heat, oscillating motion stop or cannot generate oscillating motion. Why idea will be the travel speed through here, pressure wave speed travel through liquid phase. If at same time reach here, that point oscillating motion cannot start it. Based on this idea, either because of high, very high power or zero power, rearrange this equation, and we got feeding ratio equal to this. So we found a by, byproduct. What that means, from here we can find out feeding ratio limitation. So based on this equation, we can predict, for example, for water heat pipe. If water in the heat pipe, the liquid ratio higher than 75.4%, that oscillant motion cannot start. So here are the experiment data, basically very close to our prediction. So next we are going to model this. If this is a typical mechanical vibrating system, so we need to develop this equation. In order to develop this equation, it's very simple. Basically, all forces equal to mass times acceleration. In the beginning, we made a big assumption. So that's a typical oscillating heat pipe. Right now, the big assumption is all the vapor combine into a big vapor bubble. All liquid plug combine together become one liquid plug. For this vapor bubble, for this liquid plug, we are going to use this equation, we got this equation. So solve this one, we got a solution like this. Use this equation, we can predict working fluid effect, operating temperature effect, and temperature difference between evaporature, condenser, the effect on the performance. And also we can predict external driving force effect on the oscillant motion. This result show that acetone can produce the stronger oscillant motion that's very similar to the experiment data. And this figure shows that when temperature, operating temperature goes up, Oscillating motion stronger. That's also similar to our experiment, experiment result. The temperature difference between evaporator and condenser goes up. Oscillating motion stronger. That's also similar to have the same trend of the experiment data. 
This one shows that if external frequency is same as the natural frequency, we can enhance heat transfer. But this result you can see, when the temperature difference or the power input on the heat pipe increase, oscillating motion stronger, but the frequency is same. That is not reasonable. That means we need to improve this model. So you can see that measurement is from the data temperature of the motion for given heat pipe. As we know here, so you know, when the power goes up, the frequency almost same, that's not right. Therefore, we need analyze, to try to find out how many frequencies for a given heat pipe. That's a measured temperature variation. Use a Fourier transform, we found that. The frequency from zero up to 1,000. So many frequencies. Also, we use wavelet analysis, try to find a waveform. That is experiment data. From here, you can see have many waveforms. That means if you have many waveforms, that means we have a different type of driving force in our oscillating heat pipe. Now we are going to work on individual, the, uh, uh, the control volume. What that means, that one made a big assumption, one vapor bubble, one liquid plug. Here, we have single eight turn OHP, oscillating heat pipe. Then we have a, a liquid plug randomly distributed, probably let's say 60 or 80. For each liquid plug, like this one, we divide it into four control volume. For each control volume, we are going to apply the basic equations. If you have a 10,000 control volume, probably have 10,000 equations. So the equation, we can find that. What's that? We found for a typical like this ultimate heat pipe, we have many, many waveforms. One waveform will be unidirectional flow. That waveform, you see here, that point, no movement. This waveform, this one, this one, no movement. And one plus two, that is, this kind of waveform you can see, oscillating and move forward. And one plus three, one plus three, oscillating and move forward. That is based on our the uh, theoretical analysis. This one, not moving. So that movie show that oscillant motion very different from theoretical prediction. That means we have a lot of work to do. How to model oscillation motion? That is very, very challenging. Oh, here you see. You see the oscillant motion here? You see that oscillant motion, very different from this one. That's a real situation. That means we need to further to improve our model. The next question is, what is the uh, operating limit for oscillating heat pipe? For conventional heat pipe, we know that we have a capillary limit, we have boiling limit, we have sonic limit. How about oscillating heat pipe? As we know, oscillating heat pipe due to a spring. If a spring disappear, that means alternate motion should stop. Based on this idea, we develop the develop the uh, the uh, we try to find out operating limit. Idea this: if the power very high, 
then produce the vapor momentum. The mo vapor momentum is high enough where you penetrate this liquid plaque. You penetrate the liquid plaque, all vapor connect each other, basically spring disappear. So based on this idea, so based on momentum produced by the vapor by the power, we are equal to the pressure difference across this liquid plaque plus the surface tension effect plus the fractional force in the boundary layer. So in order to, because here we need to find out the, uh, the uh, shear stress, fractional force, velocity. So we need to find out equation. That's a typical momentum equation for the uh, flow in the uh, tubing. So the equation, we can find the velocity. And here, we don't need to go to the detail. Basically, the time we find solve the equation, we can find out the operating limit like this. The power, the highest power, we are equal to with velocity, latent heat. That means related to with velocity, latent heat, total length, fitting ratio, turn number, and the liquid plug number. Use this equation, we can predict operating limit, for example, for one oscillating heat pipe charged with water, and we have six turns, the total length is about 1.86 meter. And here we have the, uh, the diameter for this tubing, the 1.65 millimeter. A little heat for the water. Based on this equation, we can predict the limit, the highest power can be transported by this heat pipe, about 573. If you're working fluid chain to you at your feet, 7,500, same dimension, but only with uh, this working fluid. The height of power is about 111. In order to verify our prediction, we did the experiment. Let's see. As we know, the power, the the highest power for given heat pipe depend on fitting ratio. When the fitting ratio goes up, the power goes up because liquid plug is longer is not easily to penetrate. So here you can see when the fitting ratio is 30%, prediction about 344. Experiment data here about 300, 280. So higher than this one, so the temperature goes up. Basically, heat pipe cannot function. If fitting ratio goes up to 70, prediction about 800. And prediction here is about 700 to 820 something. So very close to our prediction. So next, talk about the uh, oscillating motion effect on the uh, heat transfer enhancement. As we know, oscillating heat pipe can have very high thermal conductivity. The reason is oscillating motion. Oscillating motion can easily produce vortex, can easily produce many thin film region, Usually produce turbulent flow, produce momentum overshoot, and also have many H in the region. Let's see. So here is a, a, the tubing, half of the tubing. The diameter that is 0.5 millimeter, total is about one, one millimeter, I think. The, Velocity from zero meter per second goes up to one meter per second, then goes down again. That is oscillating. 
So you can see that oscillating produce many vortex. As we know, vortex can enhance heat transfer. This vortex also depends on receding advancing counter angle. Different receding advancing counter angle, the enhancement will be different. Thin film region, we know thin film evaporation, like so here the heat flux, like HV, uh, FC 72, if with a thin film evaporation can reach a very high heat flux. That's what's boiling heat transfer. You know the boiling heat transfer much less than the thin film evaporation. Thin film evaporation basically, we have very thin film and the interface here, separation pressure goes down. Both can help to increase evaporation heat transfer. For conventional heat pipe, that's the uh, growth and heat that the copper heat at here go up most of the heat will be transferred through small regions. That means thin film region, thin film evaporation can enhance heat transfer. For oscillating heat pipe, we have a liquid plug, vapor bubble, that this region automatically produces thin film region. So we can use thin film evaporation to enhance heat transfer for our awesome heat pipe. You know, for the tubing, single phase flow. For single phase flow, we know if the uh, unidirectional flow, we have a, uh, let's say, boundary condition is a constant heat flux. We know with the constant heat flux, laminar flow, Newton number is equal to 4.36. So if you have oscillating, basically the average about 4.36, that's oscillating. So we develop a model like this. We, we use this model, we predict low frequency, a high frequency, basically similar to this one. But the one frequency from this equation, we found that as that a frequency has a very high Newton number, basically 10 times better than the average 4.36. That means oscillating motion with that frequency can enhance heat transfer. And also oscillating motion easily produce turbulent flow. This one, that's a tubing with a diameter, let's say one millimeter. This, the uh, uh, velocity sensor put in the center of a tubing, R equals zero in the center. We measure velocity. When the velocity goes up, basically laminar flow. When it goes down, basically, produce a little bit of turbulence, especially close to the wall, basically the turbulence. That means for oscillation motion near wall, we can easily produce turbulence. As we know, turbulence can enhance heat transfer. The turbulence is due to momentum overshoot. That momentum back forth that can enhance heat transfer. As we know, some entry the region, liquid flow into a tubing, entry the region has a very high heat transfer coefficients. For oscillating heat pipe, we have many liquid plugs. We have a liquid plug, vapor bubble, liquid plug, vapor bubble. For each liquid plug, if moving, from bottom to top, you can see here, that one will be entry the region. That means 
for many liquid plug we have many into the region that we can enhance, enhance heat transfer. So next when we talk about the, I'm going to share with you about other factors affecting heat transfer performance in oscillating heat pipe, like a layer, channel layers, check valve, ultrasonic, gravity, nanofluid, liquid metal, and PCM. For the last thing, channel layers. You know, for the oscillating heat pipe, what we did just one layer, okay? For example, this OGP only has one layer. It's bottom or top, for example, only one layer. One layer, you can see the highest thermal conductivity, effective thermal conductivity, about 5,000. If this OHP have three layers of channels, one layer, two, three, and those la layers interconnected, that means that you could flow this way and also flow into center and also flow to the bottom. In this way, with, for example, eight kilowatts, we can reach probably 34,300, very high effect in thermal conductivity. Can you see the video? Okay, it's so dark, sorry about that. Basically, if we add a check valve, we can produce circulation. What that means, for example, the inside, for example, here, put this one into the alternate heat pipe. Liquid flow from bottom to top, flow like this way, flow this way, that means from bottom to top has, has a high pressure drop. From top to bottom, the pressure drop less than pressure drop from bottom to top. In this way, we can promote one directional circulation. We found that with circulation, the check valve can help the heat transfer performance. And also, if you look at this one, that's the also use the neutron technology. We can see through metallic wall to see the working fluid. Top is heater. You can see the heater. You see the heater. Why? The heater. Bottom is a condenser. So you can see when the power goes up, basically no difference. That means also in the heat pipe. Uh, you know, basically for our alternate heat pipe, gravity has no effect. Also, we test a small OHP with a high G up to 10. So that's alternate heat pipe, three centimeter by three centimeter. So you can see with one, five, 10, even 10 G basically some conductivity almost same. That means gravity, no effect on the performance of the alternate heat pipe. For this alternate heat pipe, we add tiny piezoelectric ceramic in here, very small. The power also is very small. And this one, we can easily produce oscillant motion. The piezoelectric ceramic produce ultrasonic effect. For example, the power here, the bottom evaporator, top the condenser, we add 29 watt. Basically, no oscillant motion. No oscillant motion. Right now, we are going to turn on piezoelectric produce ultrasonic effect. So you can see, produce oscillating motion. Even the power goes down to 18 watts. That, you know, from without piezoelectric, basically no oscillating motion. But this one you can see produce 
ultimate motion with the power, the input power of 18 watts. So here we try to use this one, we try to use the uh, ultrasonic effect as switch. So that is the temperature on the evaporator, the temperature condenser, and the power at 18 watts on the evaporator. Basically the temperature continues goes up at the point A, we switch on the ultrasonic effect. Then you can see ultimate motion started. As ultimate motion started, temperature difference goes down and temperature on the evaporator goes down. At point B, turn off the ultrasonic effect. Oscillation motion stop, the back to no oscillation motion, the temperature goes up. Also, we study nanoparticle effect. We add the nanoparticles inside. The nanoparticle can enhance heat transfer. Like this one can up to 40%. Also, we study liquid metal effect. We add a liquid metal droplet in the oscillating heat pipe. And we found that the droplet becomes smaller, the enhancement increase. Also, we, we add the phase change material in the working fluid. The purpose for this, as we know, also for the oscillating heat pipe, most of the heat is transported by sensible heat. Question is, can we increase the heat capacity, like heat, uh, heat uh, specific heat? So we are going to add PCM droplet, very small, the, uh, the PCM, like particles. The PCM inside, you know, for example, the PCM in the water, in the evaporator, the PCM become from solid become to liquid, absorb more thermal energy. When the PCM move to condenser section, release some energy, that the liquid PCM becomes solid. In this way, we can transfer more thermal energy from evaporator to condenser. So the result found that the PCM about one to 5%, we can increase the heat transport capability for oscillating heat pipe. So here is my summary here. Oscillating heat pipe can provide very high heat transport capability. The reason is oscillating heat pipe can effectively integrate Thermally excited oscillating motion, phase change heat transfer, evaporation, condensation, thin film evaporation, vortex, turbulent flow, momentum overshoot, and the region. In addition, we can add nanoparticles, liquid metal droplet, magnetic force, piezoelectric, ceramic, and many others. I think that what I share with you. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Professor uh, Ma, for that very, very nice and detailed presentation about oscillating heat pipes. And now the floor is open. If anyone want to make any question or comments, please raise your hand, then I will give you the floor to you. Uh, from the audi audience first. Yes, I can see uh, Zhenying Wang. I... Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, Professor Ma, thank you very much for your very nice talk. Uh, I'm Jin Wang, and I'm currently working as an assistant professor at Eisner and, and uh, Kyushu University. Uh, my question is that uh, to which scale can the model proposed by you be applied? For example, you talked about uh, the model from meter scale or and from uh, millimeter scale. So how about can the model be directly applied to 
such as micro scale or yeah, to, to that scale, yeah. And uh, what kind of modification could you do to these models for its application in a smaller scale? Yes, thank you. Uh, I'm not I'm not sure what the, your question you are not so but ultimately the pipe here. Yeah, can can you apply the model uh, mm -hmm. to a like mic, um, micro scale, micrometer scale? Yeah, so I think the model proposed by you can uh, you talk about model mainly on the millimeter scale and the heat pipe uh, is like uh, it's a large scale heat pipe. Uh, I'm just wondering uh, how uh, to which scale can the model proposed by you can be applied? For example, to the micro scale, uh, is it still uh, applicable? Uh, thank you. A very good question. You know, for oscillation motion here, basically, we only focus on oscillation motion from mechanical vibration point of view. Well, as you mentioned that the micro and nano scale that really to heat transfer. And uh, so right now, you know, we need a you know, uh, we need a new model to focus on heat transfer and the surface condition effect. For this model, what we are doing only for from the heat transfer of oh, from the mechanical vibration point of view. Yeah, okay, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, and another question is that, uh, so how about the experiment? Uh, to which scale have your experiment expand? Oh, uh, the uh, <laughs> ultimate heat pipe, we know, uh, you know, for ultimate heat pipe, we have a capillary tubing, okay? Yes. Inside have very small capillary tubing. The diameter must be very small. Mm -hmm. If not small, the surface tension cannot separate liquid plug and the vapor bubble. Mm -hmm. We have to form a chain of liquid plug vapor bubble. In this way, we can form like a mechanical vibration system. That one, you know. Because, like, if I show you the uh, the uh, you look at this one here, see the so inside. This one is very long heat pipe. Can you see this one? Yes. Very long heat pipe, but the inside is a micro channel. Mm -hmm. So, how how large is the diameter? Uh, micro channel that uh, depends. For example, different power, the channel from 0.2 millimeter up to five millimeter, depend on power, depend on length. Okay, I see. Yeah, and another, uh, yeah, another question is that, do you have any comments for the application of this uh, oscillating heat pipe in electronic cooling? Yes, they have many, uh, many uh, the applications. That if you uh, if you go to my company webpage, I have many many applications from the uh, aerospace application to electronic cooling. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Doctor Wang. Thank you. Say again. Any any other question from audience? See, so Professor Sarma, so it's a very nice presentation, but I have a little bit of query. So, for example, you, you used several working fluid like water, ethanol, and also sometimes you used engineered fluid like HCP 7100. So, I guess this is very, uh, the molecular weight might be very, very big or something like that. So, what happened if we, if you use a multiple like binary mixer or ternary mixer? In, in your oscillating heat pipe. Is, is this a possibility or it is not? Working? Yeah, that's a very good question. <laughs> a very good question. You no, know, for the application, you know, uh, the working flow is very, very important. For some application, we have to use 
working fluid A. But another application we have to use working fluid B. We have to right now you know uh, <laughs> the modeling from modeling you know inside we have turbulence we have two phase we have interface we have thin film region we have vortex it's very difficult to model that. So right now it's basically it's a from experiment. So experiment and that got a correlation for one application. Okay, thank you. So any other question? I guess Petros may have some comments or questions. Well, I I don't have questions uh, with you, the Professor Ma, but uh, I my. One comment I have is that uh, this area is very important. As you, as you know, as you may know, in Eisner, we have uh, a techno-economics team, which uh, uh, makes, uh, carries out an analysis of all of our projects and uh, assesses if, uh, if uh, any of our research reaches some milestones and those milestones uh, are allowing for what we develop uh, to be transferred as technology in the market and be applied in the market today, what would be the impact on CO2 emissions? And uh, the heat pipe uh, technology is, uh, is one of those that have been assessed by our techno-economics team as uh, the most impactful in reducing CO2 emissions. So I would like to thank you for the presentation today and uh, uh, showing such a such a large array right of issues that are involved in uh, research areas that can be further pursued and analyzed and uh, in general advancing this uh, this technology thank you very much thank you So this heat technology will be very useful for many uh, applications which can contribute to in the reduction of CO2 emissions. And also uh, 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 we can combine this technology even with my absorption field. So because the heat transfer is very important in our field in the in our heat exchangers, but if you can instead of uh, conventional like uh, a tube plate heat exchanger, if you can use some uh, like heat pipes, in, 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 then it can transfer the heat about 100 times faster usually because uh, it's very fast. Uh, then we can make our uh, system smaller. But of course, as you mentioned, the economic part will be there because uh, with the heat pipe, we may need some more uh, initial cost also. So maybe at some point we'll be able to work together also in the future also so that we can have a better system in case of cooling system, something like that. So is that yeah. yes? Yes, please. yeah, you're right. You're right. You know, the uh, right now the alternate heat pipe have been used for you know the uh, uh high temperature heat pump uh dryer and uh, the new type of the uh, heat changer have many applications, and uh, even you know the uh, uh the PV cell. And the battery, all that uh, have a big e impact. Okay, thank you. Say, if, if not any other comments from the floor, maybe I'll request Petros to make some concluding remarks about this webinar. Petros, please. Well, uh, I. My, uh, I've already made my remarks. I would like uh, to thank uh, Professor Ma on behalf of all my colleagues uh, for this uh, presentation that uh, was lucid for me as well. Uh, as you know, my area is in materials, uh, uh, 
uh, alloys uh, and the uh, interactions of uh, materials and alloys uh, with adverse chemomechanical environments. But uh, because of my background is mechanical engineering, so I could uh, I wouldn't say I could follow everything, but uh, I enjoyed the presentation and I thank you very much for the way you you engage us all. And I believe uh, we can explore future collaborations, future exchanges in the future, because uh, in Eisner, this is a topic that uh, we are very much interested in. As you know, uh, our colleague uh, Bidu here is working in this area. Also, we have uh, young uh, faculty like uh, Zenning Wang, uh, who asked you the question. We have uh, also some uh, associates, uh, a retired colleague, uh, Professor Takata, who has worked in this area. Uh, faculty here from the University of Illinois are interested in uh, in in this area as well. For instance, uh, my colleague Ninad Milkovic, uh, who is also an Eisner affiliate. So I think uh, together we can develop a, a strong group here, so we can advance uh, this um, phase change heat transfer, which is such uh, critical technology. Thank you again. Thank you very much. And I look forward Thanks. to welcome you in Fukuoka as well in person. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. Thanks, Petros, for your nice uh, concluding remarks and also uh, pointing out some possibility of collaboration. And uh, again, thanks, Professor Birma, for your time and also for the uh, insightful presentation. And uh, and also for all the participants also thank you very much for attending this seminar and by this i want to close this uh, webinar thank you everybody thanks bye and professor ma will again meet after 10 minutes okay okay thanks thank you thank bye. you